Fucking hell. Colin took a deep breath, working up his nerve. It was so... Oh. Okay. Oh. What? What? What's going on? Okay. It was so dark, but I had a good torch. I called her name over and over. She didn't answer. Then I heard... I call... I called her name over and over. She didn't answer. The Oh! Oh, that's way too fucking close. Okay. What is good, my dudes? It's your boy ZRG. Welcome to Midnight Evil. That's right. We're back in horror, baby. And this time around, it's a very different concept. Um, we're not gonna be playing a normal first person survival horror or whatever. This is gonna be based on reading. Yeah. So, if I, if I understand correctly, this game works. So that uh, it actually recognizes my voice in the mic, and uh, you know, tries to tries to figure out what I'm reading, and that's how the game works. So we'll we'll see when when we get in. But anyway, let's let's get let's go get it. As the clock approached midnight, William Crinkle was fast asleep. Crinkle or Grinkle? I think it's that's a C. Oh, William, you look like fucking Quasimodo from... Tonight was different, though. Because he was hopped up on speed. He woke to a strange sound coming from the attic. Okay. Am I supposed to do something here? Or no? As he climbed the stairs, he felt something. He had never seen this chest before. And inside was a pound of coke. Just an innocent book. Sure. Tonight his life would change forever. Shut up, bird. Midnight Evil. <laughs> Alright, let's get it. Come on. Let's see what's up. Okay. Nice cute little room. What were those lights there? Oh. Oh, wait. oh shit. Okay. Long before the first humans stood upright and took their place in the world. There was a beautiful land that was ruled by what many would come to call many would come to call the Fae. These ancient beings were worshipped by mankind, but they were also feared. Humans were right to be afraid, for there were many different creatures that lived in the darkness, watching us, waiting. Most were harmless enough, amusing themselves with causing by causing mischief and playing pranks on humans that crossed their paths. However, some had more sinister intentions. The Urking, for example, have developed a liking for the taste of human children. These monsters are small, unnaturally fast, and impossible to kill. It was an unlucky tragedy for my people that we decided to build our village here, right in the middle of Urkling territory. We have lost so many of our children over the past year, there aren't enough tears in this world to weep for their loss. Thankfully though, my grandmother taught me well in the ways of my druid ancestors. I may not be able to kill the little beasts, but I was able to work out a spell that binds them to this book. I can only hide it and pray that it never falls into the hands of a child. Hello? Shit. I may not be able to kill the little beasts, but I was able to work out a spell that binds them to this book. I can only hide it and pray that it never falls into the hands of a child. Which is exactly what's happening right now, so we're pretty much fucked. 
If you are reading this, know that I am truly sorry for the demons that have now been passed on to you. Opening the book will have awakened them and I'm sure they will be ravenously hungry. Once the book is opened, you must read it out loud from beginning to end in order to return them to their magical prison. Be watchful, they only attack if you don't see them coming. Most importantly, once you finish this book, keep it hidden so that no one ever opens it again. Most importantly, once you finish this book, keep it hidden so that no one ever opens it again. Holy shit. WIGSFM 98.7 Game Talk. Hello, darkness. My name is Nick Gloom. My old friend. It's just me tonight. As you guys know, we answer game questions and talk tips and tricks. Well, Nate usually does. I don't really play most of those games. Anyway, let's get to the phones. First caller, you're on the air. Hi, Nick. I'm wondering, how do I need the final boss in Germinator Destruction? How would I know that? Oh, I don't know. I'm stuck here working for crap money. I still can't afford to buy new Atari games. Would you like me to page Nate? I don't Here's know. the thing. Like I said, I'm working here. I don't usually come on the radio. So, I don't have as much of a bedside manner as Nate does. But it's totally fine. I bought a new Obasic book. Uh, which is the programming language for Otori, since I can't afford to buy my own Otori games, and I'm working on my own homebrew game. The pending title is Evil Midnight, where huh. I'm not sure what you're going to have to do yet, but I think it's going to be a horror game, and it's going to be at nighttime, and it's going to be evil. Huh. Basically, you would do something all night, and then you would win. It's kind of like working here. I try to keep my head down all night, but Janet asked me to go on the air. And I'm always getting asked to do stuff. The more stuff I get asked to do, the more I get anxious and panic. It's a vicious cycle. Is this some kind of life lesson? I just want to play Germinator. Here's the thing. What was it, Nick Bloom? He's kind of a dick. Not gonna lie. So... Um, the Urklings, all right. Oh my god, okay. Hello? What do I do with the... What is that? What are these... What are the controls here? Um, hello? Little Maggie O'Brien was the first her children had been playing in Hogan's... Oh shit, okay. The font is very weird, it's very hard to read this font. The children had been playing in Hogan's forest when they all heard a noise. Sensing no danger because... Sensing no danger because there were so many of them, 12 children all decided to investigate the source of the strange sound. As they all searched high and low, they soon realized that Maggie was missing. Frantically, they began searching for their friend. She was a small girl who loved to play hide and seek. Her big brother Colin insisted that she was probably hiding somewhere, safe and giggling to herself as she watched everyone search for her. The sun sank low in the sky and the forest grew dark. The children, frustrated and panicked, ran back to the village to alert their parents that little Maggie was nowhere to be found. That's when everyone... Holy crap! Okay. Uh, okay. That's when everyone lit torches and spread out through the woods calling her name. The little girl's mother sobbed desperately as we, as we all inspected every corner of those woods in hopes of finding her. Her brother kept searching, tears streaming down his cheeks. I'm her big... What? Heard something. I'm her big brother, he said, rubbing his eyes. I'm supposed to make sure nothing happens to her. It's not your fault, Colin, I assured him. We'll find her. 
Motherfucker. Okay. Okay. We'll find her soon as she'll be no worse for the wear. He nodded, forced... He, uh, he nodded, forced a smile, and we all continued looking. The moment I heard him scream, I knew he had found her. Or rather, what was left of her. Which wasn't much. We were sure... <laughs> yeah, go fuck yourself. We were sure it was Maggie because she had worn her favorite hair bow that day. Her father plucked the pink ribbon from the body and fell to his knees, wailing into the darkness. Poor Colin tried to tell us then. He said that she had been covered in what was described as little green men. What the fuck? They were fat and green, he stammered. With bright growing, glowing eyes, they were biting off bits of skin and flesh. No one believed the lad. We all attributed a horrible ordeal to a hungry wild animal. Of course, what else could it, possi what else could it possibly be? We all attributed the horrible ordeal to a hungry wild animal. Of course, what else could it possibly be? Scooping up what remained of little Maggie, the townsfolk set to work preparing for her funeral. We had no idea the horrors that lay ahead. Okay, that's all. That sounds good. I need to reread that. Where are you little shits? I'm waiting for you to show up. I'm gonna call Toastbusters on you. Don't fuck with me. Of course, what else could it possibly be? Scooping up what remained of little Maggie, the townsfolk set to work preparing for her funeral. We had no idea the horrors that lay ahead. I thought to myself how strange her wounds looked. I couldn't help but think back to what Colin had said about the little green men. It made me think of the stories my grandmother used to tell me. She said that our druid ancestors spoke of tiny creatures that lived long ago in the swamps and marshes surrounding our lands. The Urklings, she called them. Mm, yeah, yeah. I had a feeling that would that would trigger you to come up, <clears throat> little bitch. There were three tribes, each being own breed of evil. One tribe I. Okay. One tribe I recall, she said, were green and fat. They would lure children away from safety and feast on their flesh. We didn't live near any swamps, surely the boy's mind was playing tricks on him. Besides, the Urklings weren't real. They couldn't be. They couldn't be. Okay. And off to... Sleep? We go? I don't know, yeah. Alright. Was that like the first night or something? I don't know, there's no indicator or anything. Wait, the, door, the window is closed. Was it open previously? Because I know there was the first one showed up by... I think that, no, okay. Okay, let's see. Maggie O'Brien's funeral was just an, as anyone... Ah, uh, suddenly can't read. Maggie O'Brien's funeral was just what anyone would expect. Everyone did their best to, com to comfort the grieving parents. Colin kept to himself. Everyone assumed... <coughs> Where? 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 I heard something. I don't know where. Uh, okay. Everyone assumed it was because he blamed himself. After his sister. Oh, thank you. Will you fucking. Off with you. Motherfucker. Alright. After his sister has been. Has to. Oh, shit. Okay, one, two, one, two, let's go. After his sister had been laid to rest, I came to him to ask him how he was doing. He looked up at me, eyes red from either crying, lack of sleep, or a combination of the two, and said, I really saw them, the little green monsters. My heart ached as I put my arms around the boy. I kept telling myself that seeing his little sister in pieces couldn't have been easy for him. He was just in shock. The stories of the Urklings were only told to scale to... Blah, blah, blah. The stories of the Urklings were only told to scare children into doing what they were told. That was all. Yep. What was that? Oh, I, I got picked up something. I don't know what it is. Okay. But the first thing my grandmother told me about the Urklings was that the there were three tribes. 
The green ones had round bellies and piercing blue eyes. She said they could be heard if you walked deep into the swamp at night. <laughs> piercing blue eyes. Okay, so these are the green ones. The fat, green, blue eyes. Yeah, okay. Okay, that's one. They would laugh and sing as they danced around their tiny campfires, which would appear only as tiny flickering lights around, uh, through the trees. They were the least lethal of the tree tribes, but every bit as evil. The red ones were more temperamental and even faster than their green cousins. It... Man... What is this fucking light? What? I don't know what that means, man. Okay, so the green ones are the easiest ones, and the game is gonna show me more and more as we go, okay. And this is a good way... Um, this is a good way to introduce new enemies, uh, so to say, um, by reading a story about them, like, in-game. It's very cool. It's actually incorporated into the gameplay. Okay, anyway. They didn't sing or dance around campfires, and their celebrations were a bit more gruesome. They preferred to eat children from the inside out. Okay. Okay, so the red ones are uh, kind of nasty. They preferred to eat children inside out. They prefer to eat children inside out. From the inside out. Fuck. They prefer to eat children from the inside out. There we go. It was even thought by some that they were only red because they were stained by the blood of their victims. Fiery red. Heard that from the left, left side, but I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Fiery red, bristle like hair spouted sprouted from the tops of their heads and their growing yellow eyes glowing yellow eyes seemed cold and calculating the pale urklings were in the other class another class altogether they had white skin and wild untamed blue hair that will, that flowed out in every direction the most unsettling thing about them was they had no eyes at all yet they somehow knew oh shit okay just reading about this these ones can easily do the EBGBs. Alright. The most unsettling thing about them does. What is wrong with me? The most unsettling thing about them was that they had no eyes at all, yet they somehow were the most keen and efficient killers of the three. Grandmother said that their long, wiry hair could somehow sense the presence and locations of children. Oh! What the fuck? What is happening? I don't know, I'm so confused. Okay. Am I, am I okay? Am I alive? Okay. There were some things that all three tribes had, to, had in common. Urklings preferred to eat after midnight and would only attack him if the child didn't make direct eye contact with them. I reassured myself that the O'Brien girl being attacked barely after sunset meant that she had uh, she had to have been the victim of a wild animal attack. Yo! Okay, that's enough. A few of the men in the village came together to hunt down the beast that killed the girl. They came back two days later carrying the carcass of a large wolf. The whole village breathed a sigh of relief. The whole village breathed a sigh of relief and big celebration was held. The only one besides myself that remained anxious was Colin. Looking at his face that night, I knew that he believed the creatures that killed Maggie were still out there, waiting. He was right. The only one besides myself that remained anxious was Colin. Okay, this is a problem. I can't read too fast because then the game doesn't pick it up. Okay, so these fuckers actually do open the window by themselves. Looking at his face that night, I knew that he believed the creatures that killed Maggie were still out there, waiting. He was right. Oh, that was... that was too close. W-I-G-S-F-M 98.7 Game Talk Hello, darkness. My old friend. Welcome to the top of the hour. Again, I'm your host, Nick Gloom, filling in for Nate tonight. That was an interesting hour, I must say. I don't know, Janet, I feel like these kids don't like me. 
Hey Janet, do you like me? Yo, Nick, and nobody likes you. walking away, folks. Yeah, you're just being a dick. Anyway, call her. You're on the air. Hey, Nick. You know, just calling in. Wanted to say that you suck. I just had a feeling that that was coming. <laughs> I feel like I'm not as approachable as Nate is. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, uh, I forgot. There is a sponsor slot I was supposed to fill last hour. This one goes out to all you greasy, pizza-faced listeners. Are you tired of popping pimples? Ew, gross. Do some zits appear over and over and you have to keep popping them? Gross. Kind of like that popular video game, Mole Whacker. From the creators of Simple Pimple comes the revolutionary cream, Pimple Buster. The all-in-one, scientifically formulated pimple-destroying cream. Call 155 P I M P L E S. But hurry before supplies run out. That's 155 P I M P L E S. You know, Janet, I think Evil Midnight could use some old whacker inspiration. Something to keep the player on their toes. Or at least that last prank caller could drink some of that pimple buster. I don't know what it is. Alright. Okay. Um. Okay, so Nick Loom officially just being a dickhead for no reason. <clears throat> and I'm getting uh, assaulted by uh, tiny pedo bears, I guess. Chapter 3. The next day, Maggie's mother visited her daughter's grave, discovering something that was more than a little strange. The earth on the grave was disturbed, as if something had clawed its way out. I couldn't help but remember what grandmother had said about the red earthlings. They would burrow inside their victim and eat their way out. Could it be that we brought a whole tribe of them right into the village without even knowing it? The answer would come soon enough. Yep. I was expecting you there. It's, it's funny how they... Uh, I mean, it's it's scary, sure. Um, I mean, it's a little bit just unsettling, but it's funny how to it's it's funny how how they shrink into nothingness when you look at them. They just shrink. They they don't back out. They just <laughs> shrink. Okay. Jacob McLaren was found torn to shreds in his bed the following morning. Obviously. Oh, shit. Okay. Obviously, a wild animal hadn't attacked him inside his own house. After another devastated family and another funeral this soon after Maggie, didn't sit well with anyone. What? Okay, some sounds are... okay. The atmosphere became even more tense and, un and uncomfortable. I insisted on inspecting Jacob's remains myself, just to reassure myself that there was nothing hiding inside. Colin approached me afterwards, asking what I was looking for. I told him it was nothing, but he knew better. I told him it was nothing, but he knew better. Can you stop banging on my shit? Thank you. You believe me about the monsters, don't you? His young face was determined as he spoke. You're the only one that doesn't look at me like I'm crazy. I swallowed hard, startled. Uh, I swallowed hard, started to denying it. What? Right. But the words caught in my throat, and as much as I tried, I couldn't lie. I don't know what I'm doing wrong here, if it's my accent that's, that's the problem. I mean, you guys obviously understand me. But, uh... The game doesn't, apparently. I had to I had to reread too much. Listen, I put my hands on his shoulders. I don't think you're crazy. Oh, thank you. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Okay, the red dudes. Okay. I don't think you're crazy, but we need to be sure what we're dealing with before we spark a full-blown panic. Tell me exactly what happened. What? 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 I don't know what that means, man. I don't know. 
Tell me exactly what happened. Thank you. Fucking hell. Colin took a deep breath, working up his nerve. It was so... Oh. Okay. Oh. What? What? What's going on? Okay. It was so dark, but I had a good torch. I called her name over and over. She didn't answer. Then I heard... I call... I called her name over and over. She didn't answer. The... Oh! Oh, that's way too fucking close. Okay. Okay. Then I heard something. It sounded like chewing. It sounded like chewing. I took a few more steps and saw her laying there. Motherfucker. <sighs> I'm gonna have a heart attack, man. It's not... Okay. All over her were these fat little green monsters. Oh, red. Red? Oh, another red. Okay. Oh! Oh, oh, oh. oh okay. Okay. They had mouthfuls of pointy teeth that looked like needles and massive clawed hands. Just then, a twink's... Ugh. Just then, a twig snapped under my foot and they all stopped what they were doing and looked right at me. That's when I screamed and they scattered. Okay. They were gone before any of the grown-ups got to me. His eyes filled with tears and the memory. Please, tell me what they are. He was no more than 11 or 12, having just lost his sister and now his friend. Red? Red? More? Oh! That's a new one. Okay, hello. Alright. So, four red will come in a sequence, alright. No one had believed him when he tried to tell us before. It couldn't have been easy, but he opened up to me. I felt it only right that I tell him what I knew. We sat together by the bonfire late into the night and I told him all the old stories. Unfortunately, the one thing that my grandmother hadn't mentioned was how to get rid of them. Unfortunately, the only... Unfortunately, the one thing that my grandmother hadn't mentioned was how to get rid of them. Oh! Ah, oh, you piece of shit. Okay. Okay, let's try again. Uh, do I have to reread the chapter? Oh my god. Oh, thank you. Okay. This game is actually trolling me. I swear, I like my mic is working. I can see that it's working. I mean, it's been working so far. I don't know why I wouldn't. Um... Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm having a heart attack. Okay. Oh, thank you. These these red ones are kind of. Okay. Oh, what is this red shit that's happening? It couldn't have been easy, but he opened up to me. I felt... <laughs> Fuck. I felt it only right that I tell him what I knew. Okay. Where's my baseball bat, man? <laughs> there should be two more, but they're not coming up. I don't know. Why am I okay? Unfortunately, the unfortunately the one thing that my grandmother hadn't mentioned was how to get rid of them. Looking into the okay. looking into the flames, I got an idea. I knew that most unholy creatures were repelled by fire. Oh, oh, go away, go away, go away! Fucking okay. Well, Colin folded his arms. We will just have to test what happens to an Urkling when it's on fire. I'm gonna light you motherfuckers up! I swear. Hans, get a flamethrower! Alright. Night number... God only knows, I'm not keeping track. Maybe you guys are. Uh, we've been to 26 pages of this shit. Colin wanted to tell his friends about the Earthlings, but I begged him to keep it a secret. If any, if anyone knew that my grandmother had passed down her druidic teachings, 
It would only take one person to scream witch and I would be as good as dead. He agreed to keep... Ah, fuck. If anyone, if anyone knew that my grandmother had passed down her druidic teachings, it would only take one person to scream witch and I would be as good as dead. He agreed and kept my secret. I'm yet to see the white ones, so if the red, the red ones are this persistent and fucking aggressive, I can only imagine what the white white ones will do. Will, will do. And by the way, they have no eyes. That's the only thing I remember. I mixed a potion that would catch fire when touched by the tiniest flame. Surely this would send it screaming to the underworld. Okay. He sat quietly in his bed and waited, knowing he mustn't look them in the eye. <laughs> He must let it attack, for this would be the only way to get close to it. Just after the stroke of midnight, he began to hear them chuckling and shuffling around in the dark. Is there more? Okay, I hope I haven't missed anything. Clutching the potion bottle, hands trembling. Clutching the potion bottle, hands trembling. He lowered his gaze and braced himself. Clutching the potion bottle, hands trembling, he lowered the gaze and braced himself. Sure enough, one of them leapt from his bookshelf and sank his teeth into the flesh of his arm. Motherfuckers. He screamed and unstopped the bottle, emptying the contents over the green urkling. It tore a tiny round chunk from his arm and gulped it down just as Colin shoved the candle right into his face. <laughs> yeah, 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 we're talking about killing you, motherfuckers. It lit up like a torch and made a horrific high-pitched scream as it ran around the room trying to put itself out. The curtains caught fire as four more Urklings sprung out from their hiding places. Colin ran outside screaming and cradling his blood-soaked arm. His parents soon joined him outside in a panic trying to figure out what had happened. Nice, oh, three red, okay. Just then a tiny fireball came racing through the doorway and zigzagged towards the woods. I grabbed an empty glass jar from my cupboard and ran after it. The jar made a thunk sound as it landed over the flaming urkling and the fire quickly went out. To my horror, the thing wasn't dead. It didn't even look like it was dying. Though blackened from set being set ablaze, it was just as spunky as ever. <laughs> spunky. <laughs> spunky pieces of shit. Okay. I quickly scooped up the jar and screwed the lid on. As I made my way back, some of the villagers were trying to put out the fire inside the house, and others were tending to Colin's arm, telling him that it must have been a rat. I've never seen a rat quite like this. I shouted and held the jar up so high that everyone could see. Okay. Easy, easy. The instant they all looked at my direction, their jaws dropped and Colin's face lit up for the first time since he'd lost his sister. The instant they all looked in my direction, their jaws dropped open and Colin's face lit up for the first time since he'd lost his sister. He knew everyone finally saw that he had been telling the truth all along and they all felt terribly ashamed for not believing him in the first place. <laughs> Unfortunately, the joy of this small victory was short-lived, for over the next three days we tried every- <laughs> For over the next three days we tried every method we could think to kill the little wretch, but no matter what horrific thing we did, it wouldn't die. Okay, so... Unkillable. Great. W-I-G-S-F-M 98.7 Game Talk Hello, darkness. I'm your host, Nick Gloom, in for Nate tonight, as we dive deep into game talk. 
Sorry about those technical issues we experienced last hour. I think Janet might have fallen asleep. For those of you that missed it, we were having an interesting discussion about game difficulty and learning curves. You know, Nate likes Dragons and Dungeons, but apparently I'm dumb for thinking it's too difficult. Apparently, kids can play it. So what do I know? Kinda like my work in progress, Evil Midnight. Which, as I mentioned earlier, if you weren't around, is going to be more of a horror game. I'm not really sure, but I would imagine, in a game like that, confusing the player could be an evil tactic. Something like grooming them up to expect one thing, and then yank the rug out, so to speak. Anyway, I'm rambling. Hello, caller, you're on Game Talk. Hmm. Must have lost him. Hello, caller, you're on Game Talk. Very funny, guys. Caller, you're on Game Talk. Okay. All right, that's uh, it's been interesting so far. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop right here actually. Uh, I I don't know how to feel about this game. It's it's the mechanics are very very cool, but it's kind of uh, maybe it's just me and my microphone, but it's a little bit wonky uh, with the you know not recognizing my my voice sometimes and me having to reread sentences over and over. But anyway. It's fun. It's fun. I'll, I'll I'll definitely do another episode of this. I wanna I wanna finish this game because it does. I'm not expecting it to be too long. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, you know, if you liked it, drop a like. If you really really liked it, then click that subscribe button. Join the ZRG Legion, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Destroy out. Peace.